hello. Did you have a good Easter yesterday? Now, here we are, we're outside in the garden again because the sun's shining and it's lovely. And we're going to do craft out here and probably story out here and everything out here if we can. So, simple craft this week because you had all those difficult hats to make last week. You're going to need, well, I've got a tube out the middle of a kitchen roll, but toilet roll insides would be good if you can get someone to save them for you. Okay, but otherwise a tube like this, which you can cut in half, or if you haven't got any tubes, you want a nice piece of cereal packet, roll it round to make a tube and sellotape it down the side, okay? But with the plain bit showing on the outside because we're going to colour on it, right? You're also going to need the coloured pens, as always, and a sock. Okay, don't forget to ask before you use the sock, but you're not going to cut it. You're only going to roll it up and make a sock ball out of it. Right, so we're ready to start. Here's my tube. I'm going to cut mine in half because I only want them to be about the size of a toilet roll inside. Okay, so if you can't cut it, get a grown up or someone older to cut it for you. Right, here I go. This is going to make two, isn't it? Okay, so I've got two of these. Stand them up. Mm. Okay, not bad. We're going to make some funny face people with them. I've got two that I did before. They're over here. Okay, I made a clown funny face and I made a Martian funny face. Right, so you can make whatever sort of funny face you want on your tube. Okay, let's move those out of the way. I'm going to do another one. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to give him, if I can find a brown. What's happened to my brown? No. Nope. Oh well, yeah, that's a brown. Okay. I'm going to give my funny face some bushy eyebrows. All right, it's got very bushy, hairy eyebrows. Those are funny, aren't they? Bits sticking out all over the place. Okay. I want to make him some eyes. So let's find a nice eye color in here. I think, oh, maybe green. Okay. So I'm going to give him big green eyes my funny face and then I'm going to give him let's see if we've got red mm. yeah look at that that's a good red okay I'm gonna give him a big red nose my clown's got a big red nose as well hasn't he all right you can decide whatever you want to do on yours perhaps I'll keep the red and I'll give him a big mouth okay um, I'll give him a big open mouth. There we are, like that. Thicken him up a bit. Because he's going to be singing. Right, there he is. It's not a very good funny face, but you can take longer over this and make whatever you like, can't you? There's my Martian. So you could do an alien, couldn't you? You do a whole lot of aliens. That's a clown face. Clown face is easy because he's got a big round red nose like a cherry, but his eyes are just little and signs. Okay, and then a big, big mouth and I've given him a frilly collar on his clown suit. So you can copy those or you can do whatever you like. Make a few of them. I've got three here. Now, what about the sock? Okay, we're going to roll this sock up and make it into a sock ball. Start at the open bit, Turn it down, just like you're trying to make the sock shorter. And then turn it down again, and again, and again. Look, I'm rolling it right up. So that until I get right into the bottom where the toe goes. Probably best to start with a short sock rather than a very long one, because that takes an awful lot of work to roll up. And it gives me a little thing that I can throw, look, and catch. And if I throw it around, it's not going to hurt anything. Don't throw it, of course, where it's going to knock something over. Perhaps as it's nice weather, you could go out in the garden and do this. Okay, now we need somewhere to stand my funny faces up. Okay, so I'm going to move over here because I've got a place where I stand pumpkins at the right time of year while they ripen. So I'm going to put it on my pumpkin stand. Okay, let's put Mr. Clown in the middle and then 
my Martian over there. And then, my, oh, he's not a very good person, is he? I think I should have done a better job than that. Right, we ready to throw this sock ball. Let's have a go. Right, take a few steps back. Maybe start fairly close to see how well you do. See if I can knock one over. Oh, yes, I got Mr. Clown. Ray, have fun making yours. You can make as many as you like. If you want, you can stand them up on top of each other. Let's start singing now. We're going to start with a very great favourite. We're going to start with the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Don't forget you need to be standing up. Don't forget fast running on the spot, unless you've got somewhere big to run while you do it. Now here's a song that we haven't sung for a while. We haven't done it at all on Kids Club Online. Let's see how well we can remember it. Very easy words. The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord will be safe. I can't see if you put your hands up to tell me what a snare is. Do you remember? It's a trap, isn't it? It's, and this song is about when we're scared of what other people might do to us, what other people might think of us or what they might say about us, and that stops us following Jesus. It's a trap, but if we trust in the Lord, he'll keep us safe. He'll watch over us and take care of us. So which one do we want to be? The person who's scared and fearful, always doing whatever they think other people want, or the person who trusts in the Lord? Come on then, let's sing this one. We sing it three times. We start slowly, then a little bit faster, and then nice and swinging and fast, and you can clap along with it. And don't forget, at the end of each verse, you've got a double clap. Clap, clap, like that. man. This one, okay? You ready?
you ready to stand up again? Out like this. What? As wide as the ocean, as high as the heavens above, that's how big God's love is. You ready? Now last week we learnt a new song. Let's give it another go. You ready for this one? Come on. Now, if you were at Kids Club last week, you'll remember that we talked about when Jesus died on the cross and that after he died, they took his body and they put it in a tomb, in a cave, and sealed it up with a great big rock so that nothing else could happen. That's where his dead body was and that seemed to them like it was the end. But we also said the most exciting thing, that was that Jesus rose from the dead and Jesus was alive again. Now, it's not just that people wanted Jesus still to be alive or that they said, I feel that Jesus is still living somewhere, somehow. Real people really saw Jesus really alive. We talked about one last week, didn't we? Her name was Mary and she'd come to the tomb, not because she thought, ah, oh, I think I might see Jesus alive. She came crying and very sad. She was sure, absolutely sure, that Jesus was dead because he was dead last time she'd seen him. She came there to mourn for him and to bring spices and perfume to put on the dead body. But she met Jesus and Jesus was very much alive. Mary ran and she told the other disciples, the other people who were Jesus' good friends and followers, Jesus is alive again. Now this week we're going to tell you something that happened to them and especially to one of them. His name was Thomas. All the disciples, all the followers of Jesus have been very scared when Jesus was arrested and taken away to trial and even more so when Jesus was taken and was killed on a cross. They were very, very scared. They thought, we're Jesus' friends. We're Jesus' followers. Supposing they do that to us. Supposing I'm arrested. Supposing they take me away. And supposing they want to kill me. And so they were very scared. And after Jesus was killed, they were hiding together in a room and they had the doors locked so that no one could come. They were scared of the other people in Jerusalem. They were scared that somebody was going to come and take them away. So imagine what that was like. Very scary, isn't it? Very frightening. There they all were together, perhaps talking about the awful things that had happened, the fact that Jesus had been killed. They were very scared. There was a story going around that someone had seen Jesus alive, but, well, they knew Jesus was dead. Remember the door was locked? Can you come in when the door is locked? No, but Jesus can do anything, can't he? Suddenly, there was Jesus in the room with them. They were terrified, absolutely terrified because what do you think they thought? They thought, oh, it's a ghost, help. Jesus knew why they were so scared and he said, I'm not a ghost, look at me, look. Look at my hands and my feet. Touch me, feel me. Ghosts don't have muscles, they don't have bones like I've got. 
I suppose that they did go and, and touch him, perhaps give him a hug, perhaps shook hands with him. I don't know what they did, but, well, this wasn't a ghost. This was a real, real person. They could feel that. And they were full of joy and amazement. This is Jesus. He's alive. But they were so full of joy and amazement, they still found it hard to really believe what had happened to understand. And so Jesus said to them, have you got any food? That seems like a funny thing to ask, doesn't it? But have you got any food? Well, they had some fish that they'd cooked and they gave Jesus some fish and he ate it. No ghost, no, no strange thing. An ordinary, real, living man. Jesus, alive again. Jesus had been really, truly dead, really, truly buried. But Jesus was alive and this was wonderful and amazing. Now, there was one of Jesus' followers who wasn't there. He was usually there, but he had to go out. And I expect he was very scared going out, don't you? Walking around the streets, going where he had to go, afraid something might happen to him and was hurrying back to be with the other disciples. And when he came in, what news they had for him. This man's name was Thomas. And when Thomas came in, what do you think the first thing was that they said to him? <gasps> Go on then, what did they say? We've seen Jesus. We've seen Jesus, he's alive again. They were so excited. Thomas though, wasn't at all sure. He said, No, I'm not, not believing that at all. Unless I put my hands like, in his side and see the nail marks, I will not, I will not believe. I don't think it, I don't think it's possible. Maybe it was someone else. See, Thomas wasn't willing to believe. He hadn't seen for himself. And he said, No, no, I don't believe. Well, about a week later, everybody was in that room, still hiding, still scared, still not sure that it was safe to go out. And this time Thomas was with them. And again, although the door was locked, Jesus came and visited them and spent time with them. I've got my Bible here. I'm going to read you what it says. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas said to Jesus, My Lord and my God, you see, he knew now. This was Jesus. So it was true. Thomas believed. Jesus said to Thomas, because you've seen me, you've believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. That's people like you and me, isn't it? We haven't seen Jesus. But if we believe Jesus, if we put our trust in him, then we're some of those people Jesus is talking about to Thomas. Blessed are those who haven't seen and yet have believed. That's a lovely thing to know. And that's going to be our memory verse for this week. I'm going to put it up on my wall and then we'll see how we do. There we are. OK, let's read the pink words together. Blessed are those. Blessed are those. Which people are blessed? Okay, how about the green words? Who have not seen. Blessed are those who have not seen. Jesus said, okay, this is people like you, people like me, and people around us. None of us have seen Jesus. And yet have believed. We don't have to have seen. We can read what the people who saw and heard and touched Jesus wrote about him and we can believe that and put our trust in him. So we're some of these people. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. It comes from John's book about Jesus. 
chapter 20, verse 29. John 20, verse 29. Right. Let's have another read through, and then I'm going to hide one of the colours of words. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. John 20, verse 29. Okay. Okay. Let's cover up those. Which words are under there? Should we try? Blessed are those, did you say it? Who have not seen and yet have believed. John 20, verse 29. Okay, cover up a different one. Okay, you ready? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. John 20, verse 29. Okay, let's cover up something else. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. John 20, verse 29. Okay. What did Jesus say about these people? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. John 20, verse 29. Shut your eyes and see if you can say the verse without looking. Right, okay, let's have a go together. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. John 20, verse 29. Did you get it right? That's really good. Okay, time to go and play a game. Right, we're gonna play Captain's Coming. Who remembers Captain's Coming? Captain's Coming! Aye, aye, sir. What else do we do? Climb the rigging, right, climb up. Um, haul on the ropes, pull those ropes, come on. Swab the decks, you've got a mop in your hand. Right, cleaning the deck of the ship, swab the decks. Um, Bombs overhead! Oh no! Cover your head! Crouch down! Um, shark attack. Now I'm not going to do shark attack right here outside my garage on the ground because I'm going to get very dirty. But you lie down and you put one knee up and hold it, don't you? That's the fin of the shark. See if I can remember any others. Robert, any other things we do in Captain's Coming? Oh, port and star. But now this is going to be difficult because you're looking at me. Okay. Do you know which is your right hand? Put your right hand up, put my right hand up. No good putting up the one over this side because yours is over that side, okay? Now, that's called starboard on a ship, okay? So if I go starboard, okay? If I go port, it's gonna be very confusing for you because when I go port, you have to point that way, okay? When I go starboard, you're gonna to have to point that way. Let's see how we get on, okay? If you've got an open space, you're doing this in a big open space, like your garden, or if you've got a big room, then you can run to port, or you can run to starboard. Now, let's see, give this one a go. If I go port, which way are you running? You're running over that way, okay? If I go starboard, you're running over that way, okay? Let's try and see how we get on. You ready? Okay, swab the decks, quit with your mop, swab the decks, climb the rigging, climbing up, up into the rigging, haul on the ropes, haul on the ropes. Okay, captain's coming, <gasps> aye aye sir, port, you're going that way, yeah, okay, starboard, and port again, okay, and shark attack, everybody down on the ground, put your knee up, right, bombs overhead, oh no, captain's coming, aye aye sir. Swab the decks again. Right, get your mop out. Right, haul on the ropes. Haul on the ropes. Shark attack, down on the ground, quick. You're down on the ground. I'm not, am I? But you should be down on the ground with your knee up. Right, captain's coming, quick, up. Aye, aye, sir. Port. Uh-oh, you're going that way. Okay, starboard. You're going that way. Quick, swab the decks. Whoa, get your mop out. Quick. Um, captain's coming. Aye, aye, sir. Shark attack, quick, down. Don't let the sharks get you. Right, haul on the ropes. Haul on the ropes. Oh no, bombs overhead. Quick, 
Right, okay, captain's coming. Aye, aye, sir. Port. Starboard. Starboard. Port. Did I catch you out? Right. See if you can do it at home. Have fun. We'll see you next week. Bye.